Okay guys, I'm gonna do this bit on the inside because it's so windy here today, you can't hear me anyway. So I wanna cover a bunch of subjects, okay? So uh, it's not gonna be about one thing, it's gonna be about several things, okay? And some stuff that Joe and I have discovered that we're gonna share with you in the, in the near future. Okay, let's start out with the simple stuff. If y'all are having trouble getting your butt to the corner, I'm gonna show you a great way of doing it, okay? <clears throat> All you have to do is take your setup, I'll go this way. Your left foot is gonna be pointed at your target. Your right foot is gonna be dropped back, back here. Just drop it back. Don't come here and turn it like that and turn your whole, whole body, just drop it back. Drop it back about your heel, your toes, and uh, your heel, your toes on your right foot or your trail foot will be in line with the instep of your of your leg foot, okay? And then what that does, that puts you in automatically with the tail belt bone going this way, okay? And you get opened up all this space back here to swing. So you come back here and it's just as simple as it can be. All you gotta do is turn. You ain't gotta worry about getting to the corner. Okay, it's automatically it's going to the, to the corner. See what I'm talking about? I'll do it from this angle. You just come back, see it go to the corner. That's just easy peasy. Okay, and that drill, that alone, if you just, if you're over the top swinger and you slice the ball and everything, just play with your right foot back and hit the ball. You'll probably start drawing the ball. Okay. <clears throat> One of the most important things we can get to the ball and everything else, but if we never get through the ball the correct way, and I'm talking about the release, then we'll never, we'll never get any better. So there's only two releases. There's the roll release, and there is the body release, okay? What I call, this is more linear release to me, and this is more angular release. I'm not one of these guys who can release it like this. I can't do it. <clears throat> or just, I'm, I'm just, because I don't touch the club back right to begin with. <clears throat> and let me show you how you can figure out which one you are. If you take this club back, and you can find out, just go like here and then just stop. Okay, you see where my club is? Okay, it's not, it's more, the toe is leaning more this way behind you than in front of you. So if you're this type of player, when you get down here, you are a roll releaser. You've got to roll the club to square it up, okay? That's how you can tell. Now, if you're like me and a roll releaser, a roll releaser will roll it this way and have an open club face, okay? I'm totally opposite. When I take it back, I go the other way, okay? I go this way. <clears throat> Rollers go this way. So I'll, I'll come back and I'll twist it the other way. And, and you'll say, well, just don't twist it, okay? We'll try to play square to square. See how that works out. But anyway, I'm taking mine back. And when I'm coming down, see how mine's shut? I am a, now what I, I would call uh, underhanded pitch to release this club, okay? That's the only way I can do it because if I roll it, I'm gonna hit it way behind me or way over there, all right? So I've got to come in here with a release like that. I've got to come in like this. Palm has got to be darn near just straight up or facing the sky. That's the only way if you're this type of a player and you got a close club face coming back to the ball, you got to come up like this. If you don't and you roll it, can't bar the door. So learn which one you are and then practice on your on your release. You gotta release this club, but it's gotta be done right. Okay? Now the last thing I want to talk about is what Joe and I have been talking about for the last four or five days, and that's internal and external torque. You've got internal torque muscles and you've got external torque muscles. This explains 
exactly why you hit bad shots. Let me see if I can't think of an example. Okay, I think this is right. <clears throat> if I take my bicep, bicep right here and I try to make a muscle, let's say I'm, I'm, that's what I'm doing on the takeaway. Well, I can't try to make a muscle coming back down to the ball. Okay, once I have got that engaged, I got to disengage it and the other muscles, not the one that brought the club back, but the other muscles that you use are gonna be the one. In other words, just leave the tension off of it. Okay, and these muscles will kick in and you'll come back to the ball correctly. There's other examples. <clears throat> you can't do, you can't mix them. There's no way. You can use either one. I can use this muscle to take the club back and then use this muscle to hit with if I wanted to, but you gotta do it in a certain cycle, okay? And what happens is we don't understand muscles and what they're doing, <clears throat> which are internal and external, and we use them in a way that allows us to play bad golf, okay? That's what happens. That's what happens when I top, top a shot. I, I, I did it in the wrong cycle, okay? Because <clears throat> you've seen me top shots before. Okay, so that, what we're gonna discuss that. It's real simple. It, it's, it's not that hard. And uh, we're gonna try to explain it to you in a way that you can understand it. Apply it to what you've already learned and then put you on the road to success, okay? Once you understand it, it's simple. Okay, and we'll try to explain it that way. But Joe knows a lot more about this than I do. He, he's talked to me about it and I understand it. He probably knows how to explain it a hell of a lot better than I do. So I'm gonna let him explain it to you, okay? Because, uh, wow, uh, once you do understand it and you start doing it, your, your golf game completely changes. Talk to y'all later. Y'all have a great weekend. Bye.